morning. Morning. And welcome to worship. It is Mothering Sunday today, hey. if you weren't aware of that. <laughs> and if you're in Canada, don't worry, you haven't missed it. It's on a different day in the UK. Yes. It is in May in Canada, isn't it? It is. Yes. So if you're Canadian and you're related to us, you will be getting a Mother's Day card in May. Yes. <laughs> We're going to enjoy a blessing now. We're going to enjoy something different. We're going to enjoy somebody else singing to us this morning to start our worship with. So we're going to enjoy for the beauty of the earth. some prayers together now just to open our worship together I just I really love um the other day here we had a beautiful spring day and it just filled my heart with joy so much and I want to start with some prayers of thanksgiving uh, this morning so let's pray Lord today is a day of saying thank you Thank you for the life you gave us and thank you for giving your life for us. We thank you for each new day 
and we thank you for this new day. Help us to make the most of it. On this Mothering Sunday, we particularly give thanks for all those who loved and nurtured us when we were young. Mm. Help us also to give something of that love to others who are under our care and influence. Amen. 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 Now is a chance for you to sing. We're going to sing a, a song of invitation. Come, now is the time to worship. Let's yeah. sing together. time to worship come now is the time to give your heart come just as you are to worship come just as you are before Timothy chapter 1 5 we see these words of Paul I'm reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother Lois and then in your mother Eunice and I am persuaded now lives in you also for this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands for God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but the spirit of power, of love and self-discipline. And uh, we're going to be thinking a little bit later uh, about those words and some other words of scripture in relation to um, 
not just how mothers have an influence, but how all of us yeah. can have an influence in people's lives. Now, I think you've got a reading for us, don't you? Now, we've been officers for nearly 19 years mm. now. And uh, one of the things that I learned early on um, in the call that we were appointed to was this. She who held the teapot ruled the world. Now, most corps have somewhere on the premises a huge uh, metal teapot that's capable of serving the entire local community with tea. Mm. And actually, when that teapot is full, it's so heavy that you have to be built like a bodybuilder in order to lift it. Nevertheless, the teapot in those early cores was a sort of symbol of power. Mm. Um, and in the early days of our officership, this didn't bother me because catering's not one of my strengths. I had no desire to hold the teapot or to be in the kitchen. However, I've realised uh, that the holding on to power at all costs is never a good thing, no. even if you're serving tea to the masses, even if your original motivation was good. Now this week I've become aware of all the things that actually I can't do and the fact that I do actually need other people. I do need someone else to hold the teapot or to help me to lift it. Today is Mothering Sunday and we know at Catford that we're like a family we are God's family. Each of us has something to bring to the table. Let's take the time over the next few weeks to ask God to help us discover what it is, what that is that we have to bring and help us to have the courage to bring it. We're going to uh, have our self-denial focus now and uh, we're going to catch up with Pakistan. Yes. So we look forward to that. Hello and welcome to the last of our films for this year's Self-Denial Appeal. This week I'll be making a call to Pakistan which is one of our partners in mission, along with Denmark and Greenland, Finland and Estonia, Ghana, including Togo, and South America East. We featured Pakistan in the 2016 self-denial appeal when Kerry Koch visited the country. Pakistan has very much been the main focus for me and Rebecca for the last two years. And even though our plans have changed, we still feel very connected. Today I'll be talking to Fozia Columbus, when Kerry was making an episode about education, she met Fozia as she took her girls to school. The family would have been our next door neighbours had things worked out differently for us, so I'm really pleased to be able to connect with her today. The girls have grown and Fozia is now the core based community development manager at Territorial Headquarters in Lahore, and she looks after some of the projects funded by Self Denial. Salam, Major Fozia. Salam, Captain Ben. <laughs> uh, nice to see you. How are you? I'm absolutely fine. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, and um, how, are your, how are your children? They are doing good. And at the moment, they are at home uh, because, of the co because of the COVID. The school are closed. And uh, almost the one year, they are at home. We'd be so interested to know how has it been for the Salvation Army and its mission in 2020 with all that's the all that's gone could you tell us a bit about that when the country was locked down that was not easy time for especially for the poor those who are uh, uh, facing difficulty to get food but i'm glad that the salvation army did uh, tremendous work within the communities we are serving communities without discriminations we provide food grocery to the poor and uh, uh, health and safety kits to, to the poor. Uh, and that really uh, uh, good 
effort and get that really good initiative by the Salvation Army Pakistan. Mm. And and how about the the cause in Pakistan? How, how many cores do you have roughly, and and have they been able to meet throughout twenty twenty? We do have one hundred and thirty two uh, cores in Pakistan. And more than three hundred active officers we have in Pakistan. We have forty three cadets uh, at the moment in our training college. We are not allowed to open the church, but our officers and uh, uh, our local officers uh, they connect uh, the communities with phone or with via the social media. But our officers they did. Uh, really good work uh, on uh, on the COVID, and uh, we face COVID and the flood at the same time. But uh, the churches and the NGOs and the Salvation Army they come out uh, from their uh, offices, from their homes, and they serve the communities. Uh, for the personnel, our offices they enhance their capacity building, and from the last three years, our five offices serve in uh, um, different courts in UK. And one officer, she is working in the IHQ, and this is, uh, I, I believe that for the Pakistan territory, this is good, um, encouraging for us. Well, I think for us, I think it's, I think it's been such a great example of the mutuality of support. It's not just support flowing one way. We've needed the reinforcements from the Pakistan territory to to show us their yeah. experience to to lead in the ways that they know are successful and uh, just to bless our territory. Yeah. Fozia, tell us about your hopes and dreams for your family, your ministry and, and for the wider Salvation Army. Uh, my hope and dreams for my girls should be the good Christians, independent women, courageous women. This is my dream. My dream for my ministry, when I give myself to God and I say yes to him. And I believe that since from that day to till now and till my death, he is always with me. And he will take me and he will guide me and he will show me the way where he will be take me. And I always say yes to him. And the dream for the Salvation Army, uh, for the Pakistan, through our love, our support and our uh, call, uh, we will uh, make good disciple for the Jesus Christ. Thank you for inspiring our territory and being partners with us. And um, yeah, thank you for saying yes all those years ago yes. and keeping saying yes. <laughs> and thank you so much for your time and your inspiration. So God bless Cheers. you. God bless you too. Khuda Hafiz. Khuda Hafiz. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Well, that brings us to the end of our self-denial films. I wanted to find out how the Salvation Army has adapted to the pandemic. And while I've gained just a snapshot of what's happening around the world, I've been really inspired by the people I've talked to. I've heard how Salvationists and friends have been coping with a host of different crises. Typhoons, cyclones, flooding, and economic hardship, along with all the difficulties that this pandemic has brought. And I've heard about the incredible resilience of communities where the Salvation Army is at work. I loved what Nana Togo said about showing love when you can't be physically together. There are plenty of challenges ahead. Poverty is widespread and the Salvation Army has limited resources. But I feel more convinced of the vital work that needs to be done, work that is possible because of the money that is given through self-denial. Richard Bradbury reminded us that this is the Salvation Army's international self-denial appeal. We are all involved. And while each of us here reflect prayerfully on what we can give, Salvationists around the world are doing the same. There's a scripture in Romans that mm. says, uh, Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. And uh, as a family, as the family of God, we're connected with each other. We are. We're connected in mission and we're connected in other ways as yeah. well. And I just wanted to take some time this morning to bring um, to prayer all of those who are from the UK Territory who are currently serving overseas as officers. We always pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ across the world, but today particularly we're going to be thinking about these officers that are serving 
far from home. Let's bring them to God in prayer now. We pray for Lieutenant Colonels Nigel and Judith Schultz in Ghana. We pray for Lieutenant Colonels Ken and Anne Hawkins in Kenya. We pray for Majors David and Janet Howarth in Nigeria. We pray for Major Philippa Chagas in Brazil. We pray for Lieutenant Colonels Richard and Anne Borit in Moldova. We pray for Majors Michael and Ruth Stanit in Belgium. We pray for Captain Mark Cotterell in Sweden. We pray for Captain Rebecca Zund in Switzerland. We pray for Majors Jeff and Liz Chape in Bangladesh. And we pray for Major Tracy Palmer in Sri Lanka. We pray for Captains Richard and Heidi Bradbury in Bangladesh. We pray for Majors Kevin and Pam Pitt in Australia and Captain Janine Skinner in Australia. We pray for envoys Kevin and Jane Sanford in Indonesia. We pray for Majors David and Diane Kinsey in Taiwan. And we pray for Lieutenants Colonels Cedric and Lynn Hills in Indonesia. Oh Lord, we pray your blessing and protection over them as they seek to serve you, where you have called them to be. Amen. Amen. We're now going to have our Bible reading. Our Bible reading this morning is taken from the book of 1 Samuel. We'll be reading 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 9 through to 18. Once they had finished eating and drinking, at Shiloh. Hannah stood up. Now Eli the priest was sitting on a chair by the doorpost of the Lord's temple. In bitterness of soul, Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord. And she made a vow, saying, O Lord Almighty, if you will only look upon your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. As she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her. Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, How long will you keep on getting drunk? Get rid of your wine. Not so, my lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I've not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I've been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Eli answered, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked him. There's one Sunday in the whole year that Rebecca and I dread. And it might seem odd, but it's Mothering Sunday. It's not because it's a horrible thing, but it's because often it's a minefield to navigate for different and often personal reasons. The temptation is then 
to talk about how great women are in general, uh, which is, again, um, a good thing uh, and something that I believe in wholeheartedly. However, this year I've become aware that in doing so, I risk coming across as being patronising. It being seen as a, a, a token sermon about the power of godly women. Trying to speak into an experience which just isn't my own. I'm not a mother. I'm, I'm not a woman. So instead I've decided to talk about something that I do know. My mum. This morning, I, I hope that you'll indulge me as we take a few moments to talk about, not just about my mum, but how her influence has helped to shape and mould me and lead me towards God. Now, my mum's been one of the most important people in my life for as long as I can remember. Um, and there's many things that I, I could talk about. I could talk about her sense of humour or her smile or her encouraging nature or her cheeriness. But this morning, I want to talk about three things. I want to talk about her faith, her compassion and her willingness to sacrifice. My testimony is not one of high drama and drastic um, conversion. I was blessed by being born into a Christian family with Salvationist parents. I was dedicated in the Army Hall and attended the Salvation Army regularly. But it's not this that helped me find Christ. It was the example of faith that I found at home. A faith that was never forced, but that was lived out for me to see. I shared last week that bedtime prayers were taught. But more than that, faith was lived out. The faith of my father, as well as my mother, was not just something that was a token gesture, but something they took seriously and it showed. Not just in the way that they parented me, but also in their other relationships, in their friendships, in their attitude to work, in their honesty and in their integrity that they showed. And most importantly, in the way, and the, the way they lived and the decisions they made when we faced hard times as a family. In Timothy 2, 1, 5, Paul talks about the power of the example of faith and the impact that it can have on one's children. And that was my experience. And in truth, it wasn't just the example of my mother's face, faith, but also the faith and love of the many aunties and friends of parents and caring souls that looked out for me over the years. But it was the seed that was planted in my home by my mother and father as they lived out their faith that had the greatest impact. My life, like most other people's, is not always smooth sailing. And the truth is that during my time as an officer, uh, there have been times of, of great struggle, some brought on by myself, and others that become come because of the nature of being a leader in a church. During these times, my mum has always been there for me, day and night. 
Now, this is complicated by the fact that she lives in Canada and I live in live here in the UK. But the distance has never stopped. She's always been ready to give me the gift of her presence and her compassion. In Romans 12, 15, Paul writes, um, writes to encourage us to be with people in the good times and in the bad times. Not just to be observers of their misfortune and sadness, but partners in it. Crying when they cry, rejoicing when they rejoice, sharing in the highs and the lows of life. This act of being present is one that I've sought to bring into my own life and ministry. My mum taught me that it's important to be with somebody in their pain. She's taught me that it's more important to be with them than it is to know the right words to say. So often, the presence of another person is enough. The knowledge that they're not alone is enough to help them through even the most difficult times. Many of you might have noticed that I have, a, when, especially when I have a haircut, the tremendous scar that uh, decorates the back of my head. I'd love to say that it was received by doing something brave, but the truth is that a simple fall down the stairs is to blame. Now, being that uh, I was only 18 months at the time, the damage was easily done when I tumbled. This accident put my life in danger. And in many ways, it's a miracle that I'm even here, never mind leading a church and serving God. And I believe that one of the reasons for this is my mother's willingness to sacrifice for the sake of others. You see, as you might expect, when I was injured, with the outcome of my injuries still uncertain, my mother prayed. She prayed that if God spared me my life, she would give me back to him. This is a prayer he answered and a promise that my mother fulfilled. Now, she never forced me into ministry, but she believed that it would happen one way or another. And when the call came and I responded to that call, I was 3,000 miles away, a distance which remains today, a distance which I know serves as a continual sacrifice for both my mum and my dad. The cost of her willingness to be faithful to the promise that she'd made years before. In Samuel, we see Hannah called to make that same sacrifice. Only she gave her child up much earlier. Now, I'm not trying to compare my mum uh, to Hannah or myself even to Samuel. We are not the same people. However, the call to sacrifice for the sake of others, for the sake of the kingdom, is a universal call. It both reminds us that God is the giver of all things and that we are to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ, who gave his all for us. Now, I'm very aware that you probably, um, very aware that I probably 
make my mother sound like a saint. And uh, she'd be the first to urge me to point out that she's not. The fact is, she's just like everybody else, trying to do the best she can. Thank you, Michael, for sharing those thoughts with us. It's really nice to hear personal stories sometimes mm. and hear scripture and what it means to you yes. and your own life. And we're just going to take some a few minutes to reflect on that now. And we're going to sing this lovely song by Matt Redman. We're going to sing, I will offer up my life in spirit and truth, pouring out the oil of love as my worship to you. In surrender, I must give my every part, Lord. Receive the sacrifice of a broken heart. Let's sing it together. few announcements yes. um, you know this is our, our opportunity to share some information with you and uh, so that you're caught up on everything that's going on we want to ask you to continue to pray for John and Andrew Dinsmore yeah. um, we we've managed to get a hold of uh, the people haven't we that are, are arranging the funerals for Ian and Christine and we hope to have those details to you soon um, once those things are finalized uh, we'd also ask you to pray for John Melton and uh, for Doreen Cooper and uh, just pray that their health will get better yeah. and um, that that's the treatment that they're getting will, will start to have an impact to make them better. Yeah. Um, now, we do have some news about um, worshipping again in the hall, yes. don't we? Yes, we do. You want to share that, Rebecca? Um, we're, hoping, we're hoping and aiming to be able to worship at the hall on Easter Sunday. And uh, we will be uh, recording that worship and then posting it uh, later. Um, 
First of all, the priority is those people who can't access online worship. Yes. But we don't mind if other people want to come. Yes. Um, but you need to let us know. Yes. Because so, uh, we still need to control uh, the numbers coming to worship according right. to the government regulations. And there will, if you do decide to come, there will be restrictions in place yeah. uh, upon what we can do. Uh, but, you know, we, we know for many people that uh, it's much more meaningful if they're able yeah. to join with others. So if you want to come, then we'd encourage you to come for Easter yes. Sunday. We won't be able to have a cup of tea. No. And we won't be able to sing. No. But we will be able to worship. Yay. Which is great. Excellent. Yeah. And uh, hopefully this week you received uh, your self-denial envelope. Yes. And next Sunday will be your opportunity for um, to return that to us, and we'll be focusing on our self denial altar service yeah. next Sunday. Yeah. So those are all our announcements. We're going to sing again to uh, help bring our time of worship to a close. And uh, the the words say ten thousand reasons uh, is the name of the song, and it just reminds us that God has done so much. There's so much we can give yeah, thanks yeah. and praise God for. And uh, we're going to sing this now. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before.
for you. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And God bless you.